You have any big one there, boy? Yes, yes. Let me see a big fat one there. Yes, Kes wants to see a fat one. Yes. Is this the one you like? Right? So, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> she wanted one. I just asked it up now. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to How to Foodie Nation. I'm Kazian, and this is Chef Jason. And today he's gonna take us through all the essentials of a trend begonian market. Kazian, let's do this. Mm -hmm. So Kaz, remember when we asked everyone out there how to spell Shadow Benny? Yes, we know how to spell it now. And someone told us it's Bandania, because we're from Trinidad. Well yeah, there's have many different names. In addition to that, they also yeah. call this culantro. Yes, yes, yes. And throughout the islands, uh, they call it blessed thistle. They have mm -hmm. Rakao, different names for it. Yeah. Here in Trinidad and Tobago, Shadow Benny, mm -hmm. Bandania. Best and known for its smell. Well, I mean, this and some good chow is good to go. Yeah, 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 yeah. And essential, and when you're making some good green season, you have to put uh, this shadow bend inside there. Okay. It's very strong and pungent. Okay. Excellent with fish, great inside. Even local dishes like pilau, you mm -hmm. put it in soup, pretty much, a pardon to me, he's put it in juice and all. Juice? <laughs> I'm just kidding. So what else goes in green seasoning? When we want to talk about green seasoning, we want to talk about saib also. Yes. Saib, when people mention scallions, mm -hmm. green onions, mm -hmm. all within the same family. Okay. Here in Trinidad and Tobago, saib, very prominent in our green seasoning also yes. mm -hmm. and you get what you call a little melee parcel inside there a little bit of thyme a little piece of parsley okay. and all that goes very well inside when you see you mincing mm -hmm. up and you season up whatever so you're you throwing season. all of this in correct these. yeah the little okay. piece of fine time got it right and it's all these ingredients that actually help make our food taste so caribbean distinctive in such a way okay. fresh ingredients such as this and it's yeah. important to note that all our friends who are watching this in america right now you guys have a different celery to what we have here yeah bigger this one is a little stronger, it's pungent. You guys own, tend to be a little more fruitier. Mm -hmm. Because you, that's the ones like you will have with buffalo wings. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, yes. You know that, right? The dipping ones. <laughs> correct, dipping correct. Ones. So please be guided that when a recipe calls for celery from a Trini's perspective recipe, this is what we speak about. This is something that actually was named after me, mm -hmm. Pepper, because you know how hot. Roll eyes again. Shut Nevertheless, <laughs> at one point in time, mm -hmm. This is the hottest pepper in the world. This I know. The Maruga scorpion, scorpion pepper. When you see you can handle the size, of people be eating this raw, you know. That's Trini's for you. And you know we like it hot. I mean, I like it hot, but not this hot. People make pepper sauce with this. Yeah. They cook with it, they marinate foods with it. Mm -hmm. As mentioned, they would use it inside of like different uh, pickles and relishes. Okay. Pretty, pretty much, if you can handle pepper, the Maruga scorpion pepper will give you a run for your money. In addition to that, you can't go wrong with a good scotch bonnet. I think this one is more famous. This one, uh, I think this one is really popular in Trinidad and Tobago. We've yeah. been using it for years upon years. And the beauty about it is that, as you can see, Kez, they have right. so many different colors. Yeah. Pick up a green one there. All the variety. Beautiful. So you get the Even green. orange. They're colorful. But you make pepper sauce with this also in a household way. Uh, yeah. You grind it up a little bit of vinegar, you put a little bit of lime juice inside there. Mm -hmm. It's excellent. And I know people, especially when you see they're eating like the little chokers and stuff, yeah. cut this in half, rest it on the side of the plate, and they dab the roti just and the right, and they just eat that just so. So, Chef, you're going to teach me how to make pepper sauce then? I will teach you how to make pepper sauce very soon. All right, cool. But for my friends and they who don't like it too hot, this is very popular. Our Pimentos. pimentos our flavoring peppers. Used widely throughout different types of cuisine, Creole cuisine, Indian cuisine, Chinese cuisine, you name it. Cut it up inside there, you fry it up in the oil a little bit, it adds exuberant flavors. And it's not that hot. Actually, it's more sweet than anything I find. Sometimes you get, and am I correct? Sometimes you get a light little spiciness inside of it, depending on... If they plant together, yeah, yeah it will uh, burn in it a little, not much. So it kind of fuses together and makes it a little bit hotter. So you always say that. She does that when it's pollinating. She does when it's not growing. Yeah. Flowers itself. Yeah. Okay. So the bees are responsible for the pollination. Right. Wow. That's cool. My mother always says that when you're cooking with these, mm -hmm. break a little piece, yeah. taste it okay. to ensure. To see how hot it is or what the flavor is like. Correct. By all means. So that's our pimentos, very beautiful. Scorpion and our Scotch bonnet peppers. Yeah. That's your pepper lesson. Thank you very much. <laughs> Let's go on. Thanks. All right, so Kazian, I just saw this, right? And it's very important that I make note of this. You know what this is? What is this? It looks like... It looks like ginger. Kind of like ginger, Right. nuts. Definitely nuts. Right, so this is what you call turmeric. 
Oh, really? Turmeric, this yes. Is, this is what turmeric looks like. I this only is, know about the powder. This, okay, so that's a big misconception. Okay. The one that we skin in the pack, yeah. we call that saffron. Yeah. It's not really saffron. This is what it is. It's freshly grated turmeric. Saffron is actually the stamen, the little frills that grow from the crocus plant, the most expensive okay. spice in the world. Turmeric, this is an integral spice when making curry. Okay. People will say, all right, I put in saffron in the curry. Yeah. Really and truly, it's not saffron. They mean turmeric. They mean turmeric. Okay. So you will take this, you will peel it, mm -hmm. you will then grate it. Right. And you'll get that nice color. Very integral. So if you're making curry, use this. Mm -hmm. Very good inside there. So Kez, you know preservation was a big thing from since the beginning of time. Yeah. In terms of how we would salt cure meats. Mm -hmm, because there were no fridges or storage or anything like that. Correct. So one of those uh, great items will obviously be, be salt fish. And pretty much any type of fish could be used. I know cod is predominantly used. Okay. And a layer of salt is added to it. And it's uh, cured for a period of time. Now, when using this, mm -hmm. you just remove some of the salt from it. You wash yeah, it out. You wash it. You cut it up and then you put it inside water to boil. So okay. you boil out some of the salt. Okay. I've seen it even in a drier form like that. Mm -hmm. The more dry it is, the longer it takes to rehydrate. Okay. You could actually then uh, soak this overnight. Mm -hmm. Or if you're in a rush, you boil it. Okay. And you rinse the water out two or three times to get rid of the salt. And you could use this to make acras. You will use it to make buljol. You know, that mm -hmm. great mm -hmm. buljol mm -hmm. item, that breakfast item here in Trinidad and Tobago. But in addition to small fish, smoked herring is also used also. Smoked herring. That is, uh, it is smoked to the point where it is cured. Yes. So it's in the dry form, we flake it, mm -hmm. and we cook it up with onions and garlic. Very good stuff. If you move to this side now, you would see we have pigtails. Yes. Now, these are salt cured pigtails. Mm -hmm. When you see you're making a good pilau, you pilau put these inside it. Put in kalalu. Mm -hmm. What else you put in? Soup. Soup. Baji rice. Pretty much anything that you want to impregnate, a lot salt. of flavor inside of there. Yeah. These salt cured pigtails work very well. So what you do, you cut them up into small pieces, mm -hmm. maybe one inch pieces. You boil them. Yeah. Maybe two or three times to remove the same salt. Same principle like the salted fish. Okay. And then uh, you then put it into whatever you're cooking. Mm -hmm. Adds great flavor. Yeah. So salt fish is definite. Salt fish and pigtails. A must. Very big a in must. Trinidad and Tobago. Because if it's one thing I is enjoying on a Sunday, yeah. it's some good dashing. 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 That's what we're talking about. Nice but dashing root. Chef, where the um, you rest? Where the leaves? <laughs> the leaves. Well, that's the thing about it. We use the leaves to make the kalalu. Okay. This is the actual root. So you call this dashing root. Okay. So, so the leaves on top. Yeah. Root below. Okay. You peel this up. You boil this, and you fry this up nice with some good salt fish. You're good to go, especially on a Sunday. Now this is my favorite preservation over here. Let's move. Well, this cassava. No. This is like probably one of those provisions that they eat around the world, especially yeah. in Spanish cuisine. Also they have known another name for it. So. Yucca. Right, 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 yucca. So you boil this up, you remove the skin. It's a certain way you remove the skin. You have to peel it in a spiral and you peel okay. out the skin, you boil it. Okay. And this is excellent also like fry cassava. It's, it's not always this small. Like no, it has some. bigger over there. Yeah, some big cassava give a, I only see like small one. Let me see if you see a big one. You have any big one there, boy? Let me see a big fat one there. Guess what to see a fat one? Yes! This is the one you like, right? So, <laughs> obviously... <laughs> she wanted one, I just asked her to help me out here. <laughs> so you want to peel this up. Yeah. Now this obviously would feed a lot of people because it's a big piece, you slice it up. Yeah. I boil it, mm -hmm. you can easily fry this. Yeah. You can make like chips without of it. Like, the, like There you go, the sticks out of it. Yeah. Boil it up, fry it up with some butter inside there, some seasons, good to go. So I mean our provisions, talk about dashin, yam, cassava, all these things make up a true staple when we in talk about in our treaty kitchen. Yeah. Dashin bush bhaji girl. We did something with this the other day. We made kalalu. We made kalalu. And remember we were talking about when uh, buying dashin bush bhaji, we want to get the nice young leaves. Yeah. The one that tends to be rolled up yeah. because they're nice and young. Mm -hmm. They cook very simply. The thing about this is that when you cook it, we are there, let me see. They're talking about roll one here. You see how this the thing roll up nice. Yeah. And you know when they say young thing nice. <laughs> so, like you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> when you see you cooking this again, Ramchan, we did Kalalu. I showed you how to clean it up. Yeah. And these nice roll leaves are excellent. 
not only for making kalaloo, but like mm -hmm. if you're making like let's say bhaji and rice. Yeah. You know that that Indian dish that we eat like rice with and roti. So dashing bush bhaji is used for that. In addition to that, if you're making like sahina. So you'd use dashing bush for sahina. Correct. Also, and uh, what you do is roll out the leaves and great preparation with the split peas. Yeah. So I mean, this is very versatile. The thing about this is that to eat this, you have to ensure that it's cooked properly because right. it has calcium oxalate in it, which could yeah. be poisonous. Oh, really? So you make sure that it's cooked properly. But this leaf also is very versatile. So if you open out this leaf here, let me show it to you. Some help? Yeah. You could easily take this out and probably steam it. Yes. And maybe put fish inside of it and roll it up into a nice parcel. It makes Ooh. for a really gourmet dish, you know, like Steamed for restaurants. Exactly. So I mean, very versatile stuff and it's great to use innovative methods, especially with our indigenous foods like kalaloo bush and recreate new methods of presenting it. Sounds good. Chef, you're tired. Hot. Okay, so guys, <laughs> I think we have completed the essentials of a great Trinbagonian market run. I think we got a myriad of ingredients, fresh yes. produce, and uh, we have to put it into good use. So, so Chef, you're trying to say that you're going to cook for me again? Of course, Kezian. That's my main role here, obviously, to cook again and again and again for you. <laughs> Very good. So, guys, be sure to comment below and tell us, what would you like Chef to teach us next? Yeah. Something using one of the market ingredients, right? By, by all means, you know, let us know. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll be sure to cover it for you. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye.